this is Chicho. Uh, as always, welcome to my channel. Now, as you know, I've uh, been in the process of doing a move for the last few months, and uh, we're in slow motion basically. The way it works is you set up everything, you're living comfortably, and you got a lot of boxes, and you go over those boxes slowly, right? And um, since uh, we put out the last video on uh, comic books where I was showing you um, that the comics I've been buying, what my pull list is, and some of the randoms that I've been buying for the last two to three months, uh, I figured I'd show you this as well, um, which is uh, something that I came across uh, during this move. And it's basically the comic books that I've had in my collection for the longest period of time, okay? They're not the oldest comic books I've, I've got in my collection in terms of how, you know, their age is when they came out. But they are the ones that I've had in my collection for the longest. And it wasn't really something that uh, started off as being a collection, I guess, if you can call it that. Because if you watch some of the comic book videos um, I put out, I've mentioned that I've been collecting comic books for 25 to 30 years. But I've been reading comic books for much longer since I was, you know, much younger, right? Um, and uh, these comic books are from that era, okay? Before I really understood what collecting was and before I really got into full-blown collecting, okay? Um, now, just to give you, let me give you a little intro to this because um, it'll make more sense of how precious, I guess, these books are to me, okay? Um, Value-wise, I, I don't know what their value is. Uh, I, you know, I haven't come across anything like this. I don't know anyone that has these, right? Um, but basically, um, you know, if you've read some of the comments, uh, people have asked me who I am, where I'm from, and stuff like this. And um, for me, I'm basically full-blown West Coast Canadian mentality. Okay, and if you've ever been to the west coast of Canada, Vancouver, uh, Victoria, the islands, and just Pacific Northwest, sort of the mentality, the mindset sort of merges down to uh, Washington, west coast of Washington, west coast of Oregon, right? Pacific Northwest. So that's sort of my mindset. That's, that's you know, I've been here the longest of my life for about uh, since 1978, and I've traveled all over Canada. I lived all over Canada. Um, so very much Canadian mindset, right? But I was born in Iran, right? I came here um, in 1978 when I was 10 years old. Uh, so I was born in Iran and my first language is Armenian. So, you know, people have been asking me what my background is and um, who I am and stuff like this and what my nationality is. And my reply, depending on uh, my mood and, you know, my mindset. So, you know, sometimes I say I'm West Coast Canadian, Iranian, Armenian. Sometimes I say Iranian, Armenian, Canadian. Sometimes it's Armenian, Iranian, Canadian, right? I mix it up a lot. Uh, sort of a mishmash of things, right? So these comic books are from the period uh, before I lived in Canada, okay? And I remember having other comic books as well, but when we were doing, you know, immigrating to Canada, uh, you can't bring everything, right? And I remember uh, when we were younger, we had like, when we were moving, we had to get rid of everything, right? So almost everything. So, you know, we had garage sales, if you call them garage sales, just sales and yard sales back there. And we had our toys and stuff. and. You know, people were coming in from the neighborhood and just buying things, you know, just for little money and stuff like this. So I'm pretty sure I got rid of the rest of my comic books during that period. Um, because I do remember having some X-Men, right, uh, from Iran. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, there's only so much you can bring, right? So X-Men really stood out for me uh, from that period, uh, you know, when I was like, I guess, eight, nine years old, right? Um, and you know they didn't make their way here to me to canada uh, so i'm assuming they were either thrown away or one of my friends grabbed them or i gave them to them or something happened to them right but i did happen to bring these ones and i'm you know i don't remember uh how many of these i had but i do remember these were really important to me 
and, and they are very important to me. And they're basically some of the comic books that I know a lot of people around the world um, is how they got into comic books or the first set of comic books they've read. And these are my Tintin collection, okay? And they're in Farsi, they're in Persian, right? So these are the comic books I've had for the longest time, okay? Um, before I even collected, started collecting comics, I guess these, these Tintin books are the ones that really started off my collection. Um, and unfortunately, I was really young when I came over, so I don't read Farsi anymore. Uh, English um, is the only language that I read and write in. Uh, and it's the only language I'm very fluent in. Uh, I don't read Armenian. I, I knew a little bit when I was younger, and I knew Farsi well, and so unfortunately I forgot it. Uh, when we came here, there weren't, I didn't have any Iranian friends. Uh, you know, there were, <laughs> that was the only Iranian in my elementary school, and, um, and I didn't speak a word of English, so I had to learn English, and unfortunately, I guess Farsi became sacrificed. So this is, this is one of them. Um, and I've read some of these in English um, after the fact, right? But I remember reading these things. It's not just the covers, right? In Farsi, you read, uh, you know, this way from, I guess, right to left, uh, as opposed to reading this way, right? So everything's like sort of like manga, right? Uh, and these are... These are the comics, right? Hopefully they can focus. And it's all in Farsi. And I really don't know if uh, these were made. They must be legit, but in Iran back in the day, uh, just like many other, many other countries, even now, uh, a lot of the stuff is pirated. We used to buy music cassette tapes that were all pirated. Right before this is way before the internet, obviously way before torrenting, way before soul seek, peer to peer sharing, and stuff like this. So the only way you could get your hands on certain types of music was pirated music, right? Cassette tapes. So companies would buy, or people would buy cassette tapes and then copy those tapes onto, you know, recordable tapes. And the recordable tapes were actually better quality, so they lasted much longer than original tapes you would buy, right? Um, and I'm guessing some of the comic books I did have in my collection were, were, uh, <laughs> were also pirated. But I'm not sure about these ones, if these were pirated or not, right? <sighs> Fun. Um, I think at some point I'm going to go buy and buy the English version of these and have a read through these again. Um, but I loved Tintin, really. Tintin and uh, Ast Asterix, I think, it was a French comic book. And Tintin, I think, is from it's Europe. I think it's Belgium. Is it Belgium? I should have looked this up beforehand, right? So this is one of them. Right? And I always, always liked, loved the back cover for some reason. It was just playful, right? Just playful. So one, right? And if you read these, uh, I hope you love them as much as I do. Uh, the pirate one I loved. Wow, wow, wow. Awesome. Awesome. Right? Fantastic. Oh, I remember this. This one when the two, two guys start. I don't know what the story behind it. I just remember seeing this in one of the books that I read. I don't know if it's one of the ones I have here. Or one that I might have left, uh, uh, you know, didn't bring over with me, right? These two are awesome. And then I think this one is, uh, yeah, that's right. This one he talks about, he talks about his, one of his ancestors, that's a pirate. And I think they go back in history and talk about, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> this is 
So he starts talking about one of his ancestors that was a pirate. Right? And talks about his adventures. And they flip between him telling the story and going onto the ship, right? Having flash well, not flashbacks, but remembering his ancestor, the story behind them. So that's a pirate one. So there's two. This one was fantastic. I think this was going to Egypt. One of the pyramids or something, maybe. I don't know. Wow, look at the island. Remember this one. <laughs> Remember this guy? I think he just made an appearance, this guy here. He just made an appearance in uh, in this issue. Okay. The professor. Awesome. Fantastic. And Tintin comics are uh, comic books are amazing. And one thing that surprised me, as you know, um, if you've watched some of the previous comic book videos, you know I have doubles and triples of some stuff that I've collected. Just because if I like something, I like, I don't know, I just buy multiple copies sometimes. And sometimes it's for investing too, right? Uh, you know, th there's some, some no-brainers. There's first appearances that come up. There's, you know, not a bad idea to grab a couple of copies if they're going to be, if you think they're going to be important issues or there's some writers coming up or independence, low print run stuff. Um, so I do have some doubles and triples and multiple copies of certain comic books in my collection and I guess uh, this is something that I did back in the day when I was younger too because I got two copies of this one <laughs> I don't know why I really don't know why um, one of them might have been uh, someone else in my family that had it and I just sort of inherited it I guess uh, if you watch some of my previous videos you'll know what I mean uh, this one too has that professor and, uh, and whatnot. The color scheme for these is amazing. The panel work was pretty simple, um, just square panel work, uh, just classic, just classic storytelling, right? Uh, I don't remember the story uh, at all. I remember the. I think I had the one with the gigantic mushroom uh, as well. Uh, uh, they were amazing um, beautiful so I hope uh, uh, if you've never read Tintin never read Tintin uh, you should definitely read Tintin uh, yeah, I remember this one this one is the the professor here starts spinning with his chair floating up something goes on right uh, if you've never read Tintin, wow, look at this one. This little zombie guy, mummy guy coming. Super cool. Uh, they're amazing uh, comic books. Uh, they're great comic books if you want to introduce uh, children to comics. Uh, as far as I remember anyway, because I read these uh, when I was young. I guess seven, eight years old, nine years old, and they stuck with me uh, up to now. And I, uh, hopefully they'll stick with me until the end of my days, right? Um, and they were important enough for me to bring over across the ocean, right? Actually, on the other side of the globe, because Iran and Canada were 12 hours, 12 hour difference. So it literally brought it to the other side of the world with me so this is how important these things were to me so i'm assuming as a child um there were amazing stories and they grasp uh my imagination right and the odds are i was more you know back then um my reading abilities weren't as you know as well developed i don't know maybe you know i've probably had these since i was six seven years old i have no idea right but um, I do remember looking at the pictures intricately, right? And the pictures in these things, the, 
uh, the drawings the color scheme is absolutely amazing and there's a lot of detail in these um, I mean you can look at just as an example look at this you know there's some kind of performance you know hypnotist, hypnotist here and if you look at this uh, hopefully it shows up but in the background all the pictures all the faces of the audience they actually took care to draw the faces with different expressions in them uh, in detail well within reason right little detail right so absolutely amazing and I remember when I was a kid looking at these images in detail right and you know you could get the full story basically by just following the images and as far as I know they are uh, child friendly kid friendly uh, and they're worth well worth reading and I will at some point uh, go back and read these as an adult okay uh, I thought you'd get a kick out of this um, for those of you who are following me uh, uh, or subscribe to my channel uh, for the comic book videos and these are the comic books that I've had with me for the longest period of time and that would be 40 plus years okay way before I got into full-blown collecting fun um, that's it for now I'll see you guys in the next video